Granada Nestled in the picturesque Sierra Nevada foothills, this enchanting city boasts a rich Islamic heritage and prides itself on Spain's most visited monument, the Alhambra. Whether it's exploring the cobble lanes of the medieval Albaicin, hiking up to the cave-studded neighborhood of Sacramonte to the Gypsy Quarter, learning some flamenco choreographies, or even savoring the traditional sweet pastries called piononos, there is just so much to do in this historic Andalusian city. Now, whenever I go exploring new cities, I love to search for new experiences. Now, in Spain, one of the most common things to do is to go and see a flamenco show. But I thought, why not actually learn some flamenco, immerse myself in it? So I searched Airbnb experiences and found one with a 4.9 star rating called Flamenco Dance Class with a Baila Hora. Natalie was just amazing. She was super passionate about flamenco, really knowledgeable about its roots and origins, and as a teacher, she was so patient and caring. I really recommend this. You're gonna have so much fun dancing with her. Now, talking about unique experiences, of course, when you go to any Spanish city, you'll want to indulge yourself in the delicious tours. But don't forget to also head to Isla to try something much more local and authentic. The sweet pastry is called Pio Nonos, named after Pope Pius IX's Italian nickname Pio Nono. <laughs> Aquí tenemos el piano tradicional de Granada, el único y auténtico piano de Santa Fe. They are traditionally made in Santa Fe, a village near the city of Granada. And they come in many varieties at Isla, including original, white chocolate mixed with vanilla, mandarin flavored, and chocolate. Now, hands down, one of my favorite places to explore was the Alcaiceria, which originally was known as the Moorish Silk Market. It is an area with a rich history and local culture where interesting and exotic items are still for sale. Traditionally painted ceramics, inlaid wood and stained glass lamps, beautiful ethnic clothing and of course, how can you miss the delicious Arabic sweets and teas. Now fun fact, the name al Qaisariya has Roman origins and meant Caesar's place in Arabic. This name was to thank the Byzantine Emperor Justinianus after he had granted the Arabs the exclusive rights to produce and sell silk in the 6th century. Talking about Islamic or Arabic influences, the most important monument in the stunning city and perhaps all of Spain is the Alhambra, meaning the Crimson Red Castle. It was created originally for military purposes and is known for its triple character. It was an Alcazaba, fortress, an Alcazar, palace, and a small Medina, city, all in one. You'll notice that when buying tickets, which by the way you should do months in advance, you have options of visiting three important places, the Nazareth palaces, Generalife, and the Alcazaba. The Alcazaba is the oldest part of the Alhambra, fortified military enclosure with towers and surveillance posts where the soldiers lived. The Nazareth palaces was the residence of the sultans of Granada, a set of palaces and courtyards built at different times. And the Generalife is a country estate with beautiful gardens used by the sultans of Granada as a place of rest and a summer residence. Now, if you haven't yet booked your accommodation, I highly recommend the cozy Airbnb by Jose, located in the beautiful Albaicin district that overlooks the Alhambra. Imagine before going to bed at night, having a cup of tea and overlooking the magnificent Alhambra from your window. Sounds good, huh? And guess what? It only costed us 59 euros per night for two people, plus it has a 4.75 star rating. 
Talking about the Albaisen district, I personally loved walking through the winding whitewashed streets, stumbling upon little bars and restaurants, the beautiful flower-filled balconies, and of course, the quaint churches, convents, and carmens. In particular, the Mirador de San Nicolas and San Cristobal viewpoints that offer magnificent views of the Alhambra as well as the entire city are not to be missed. The atmosphere there is also lively and creative. If you head further down, you can also reach Sacromonte, known as the Gypsy Quarter, drawing visitors to the hills above Granada for music and dancing after dark. More specifically, dramatic flamenco shows along the narrow Camino de Sacromonte road. <laughs> During the rest of your days in Granada, don't forget to also visit other iconic places in the heart of the city, including the Coral del Carbon. What is fascinating about this place is that it is the oldest Andalusian monument in Granada, dating back to 1336 or even earlier. It was originally a granary and a roadhouse of sorts, a place for Arab traders to stay while in town to sell their wares to the merchants in the nearby market areas. While the inside looks quite run down, the true gem is the entrance, including the amazing geometrical patterns within the Moorish arch which reveals Arabic calligraphy. From here, you will also find the stunning Baroque and Renaissance style Cathedral of the Incarnation. Enrique Egas, an exceptional Spanish architect, laid the first stone of this building in 1523. Go in, enjoy a moment of silence, and be grateful for being able to lay your eyes on such beautiful religious works of art and design. Right by the cathedral, we also stumbled upon this interesting medieval tea house. It turned out to be a popular chain selling all types of herbs, teas, spices, dried fruits and other oriental finds that could be interesting souvenir items. Not only are they authentic and local, but also healthy, easy to carry with you and feature a great variety. walking around and exploring, give yourself some time to also just sit at a local tapas bar and unwind. It's the perfect way to not only savor some Spanish delights, but to also get a feel of local life. The clinking of glasses, the chatter of families, the smell of patatas bravas. It doesn't get better than this. video on the top 10 things to do in Granada and would like more travel inspiration from not only around Spain but also the rest of the world, do hit the like and subscribe button to my channel. Would love to also hear from you in the comment section below. Have a great day and see you next time.